Hey guys, it's Sarah and today is Booklist Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library. And every Thursday we bring you some sort of list or book topic that we feel like talking about for the week. And this week we are going to be giving you our follow-ups for our latest edition of Five Star Predictions. This round we worked with Gloria from Gloria Thompson and we decided to focus on some books that have been recommended to us a lot. So things that we have on our shelves that whenever we talk about them or show them, people say that they think that we are going to love these books and they recommend them. So um, ironically and not on purpose, <laughs> I had three historical fiction books on my list. So that was interesting. And the results were very interesting. Oh, yikes. Okay, we're going to go in the order that I read them. So let's see here. Okay, so... The first one I read was The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. This is by Kim Michelle Richardson. I listened to the audiobook of this and it is narrated by Katie Score. This was a book that was gifted to me from my friend Monica. So thank you, Monica, very much. Um, okay. <laughs> I was actually really surprised that I had very mediocre feelings about this book. I know. And this is such a popular book and everybody loves it so much. And I, I read it and I was just kind of like, okay, <laughs> at the end of it. So this follows a woman who is a, a horseback librarian in Kentucky. And it is like, I don't know. It's, it was set in the 1930s and it like, see, it's hard for me to even talk about it. Cause it's like, I don't even, I can't even like tell you the actual plot of this book. So I feel like there wasn't necessarily a plot. It was just like a slice of life type thing. Like this is just how their lives were. Um, so she's living with her father. Her mother has passed away. She is enjoying her job as a librarian. That, that's her passion. She loves books. She loves passing knowledge. She loves delivering books to people and reading with them and teaching people how to read. And she does all that kind of stuff because she's delivering to very impoverished areas, including where she lives. And she, her skin has like a bluish tint to it. And for a very long time, people were treated almost like a different race because of that. So that was actually kind of interesting. Um, I did like the parts about explaining why her skin was tinted a blue like that and what the discoveries were and, um, you know, like medical stuff that was actually pretty interesting to me. Um, and then how she was treated because of it, because she literally was treated like a pariah. <laughs> um, she was treated terribly by people in town. And... <sighs> But that's kind of it. Like, that was just kind of the story. And it was just like, okay, I wanted more of a plot. I wanted more of, I hate to say a reason for the book, but I wanted more of a reason for the book. You know what I mean? And I didn't really fully feel like it was a well thought out storyline. I didn't feel like there was a storyline. I feel like it was just, we were taking a glimpse into this person's life and that, okay, like, I don't necessarily always love that in a book. I'm a plot driven reader and I was looking for the plot. So I know, <laughs> but I did like the ending. I did like the way that it ended. Um, but that was kind of the most exciting part was like just the very end. And so I read, you know, this book and just kind of was feeling very mediocre. And then the end was interesting, but that was it. And I, yeah, it was just okay. I gave it three stars. This is one that I, I feel like, I don't know, I, I, I guess I don't get the hype for this one, but that's just me and it's fine. It's totally fine. I read it. I'm glad I read it. I know what my opinion is now, but definitely not, definitely not five stars. I'm sorry. Okay. <sighs> the Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. Uh, this is another one that I listened to on audio. It was read by Noah Taylor. He did a great job. <sighs> okay, this one is so weird because anytime I have talked about this book, I have people literally screaming at me in my comments to read this book because they loved it so much and they were sobbing and blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the thing. 
basic premise, this follows a married couple who live on this very tiny secluded island. They're pretty much by themselves. They're very isolated um, with the lighthouse. And, you know, anytime they need to go like shopping or any supplies, they have to like row out and go into town and stuff, blah, blah, blah. So they are struggling with infertility. They desperately want a child. They're trying, but it's, it's like miscarriage after miscarriage type thing. So that's very, very heavy in this book. So be warned about that if that's something that you're sensitive to. Um, and so one day a boat comes like it's seemingly abandoned boat washes up on their shore and there is a man in it and an infant, like a baby. Um, the man is not alive, but the baby is. And so the wife, Isabel, sees this as this is a gift. <laughs> this is our child. They wash up on the shores for a reason. This is our child. Got it. Okay. Okay. The reason I struggled so hard with this book was because overall, I feel like the storyline was very interesting and I liked the way that the storyline went, but at the same time, I could not stand Isabel. I couldn't stand her. I felt like she was so selfish and that she took her own desires to an extreme point to where <laughs> she allowed things to happen that should not have been happening. And those were decisions that she made. And I could not understand it. I was just going, how is this more important than everything else happening around you? This, this one thing. I don't know. Like, and I've, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I want to say it's because I don't understand infertility like I did not struggle with infertility but I have experienced a miscarriage so I do have that experience as far as this book goes um but other like other than one time it everything else has been fine for me so maybe I don't understand it on that deep of a level so I do understand my ignorance in that part of it but every time she made a decision I was screaming and it just, it affected me to the point where I couldn't enjoy the book because I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, like I can't with you. Um, so it was, it was hard for me to feel bad for her because of the things that she was doing. I just didn't get it. So, and then I also saw Thomas, her husband struggling as well. And he made some decisions that I was just like, why are you doing this? And it's just like, I don't know. <sighs> so this was a very strange reading experience because I felt like the storyline was good. The writing was good, but I could not stand the decisions that were being made. And it really affected me to the point where I didn't enjoy the book. I hope that all made sense. Ooh. So another three stars because the storyline was good and the writing was good. So I'm going to give it definitely credit for those, but I just, I don't know. Overall, I didn't enjoy my time reading it and I could not stand Isabel in particular. Thomas also did some things that I was like, what? Why? <sighs> three stars. Okay, last but definitely not least, um, <laughs> guys, do not laugh at me. Okay, The Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne. Do you see something? What do you see here? A bookmark, because guess who's still reading it? You guys, um, I'm like barely 50 pages into this book. However, I have already used three book darts in it. Yep, three. Um, I am reading this physically. Um, and I'm realizing I started this on the train when we went to New York. Um, and I read everything in here. I read on the train. <sighs> this so far, the 50 pages I read in this, I've enjoyed more than either one of those two books. So I'm going to say that this is still very much a five-star prediction for me. I just could not finish it before the deadline. Um, and part of that is because this is something I, I cannot fly through. I need to take my time with it. I don't want to just 
breeze through it and it's not that type of a book. And I didn't really realize that going into it. I didn't know that this was going to be something I was really going to want to like take my time and focus and take it in. I mean, we are barely cracking the surface of the story, obviously, because this is a very long book. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> so I don't have a rating for you on this one yet, but I it is something that I'm going to be concentrating on and working on um, throughout the rest of the year. Like I'm, I'm just going to say it might take me a little bit still um, because it's just something I have to kind of like sit with. It's that type of book, which I just wasn't really expecting. So, but I am loving it so far. <laughs> and I, I truly do feel even after 50 pages that this could be a five star and a favorite. Um, and like I said, we're barely scratching the surface of the story. So it's just, yeah. So I failed to finish this before the deadline. However, I am loving it. And I'll say of the three, these 50 pages have been my favorite. <laughs> so bad. It's so bad, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, I feel bad like dogging on these other two books because I know that they are very beloved. They just weren't beloved to me. And that's okay. We all have our own opinions and it's fine. Um, that was just my reading experience and not diminishing anything from anybody else. I'm so glad a lot of people love those books, like legitimately. Um, and so far I'm loving this one, but this will be finished before the end of the year. Definitely. Cause I do plan to be picking it up, but um, I'm just probably wasn't the best idea for a video with a deadline. Cause I really just need to take my time with it. I really hope the other ladies did better than me. <laughs> I really hope they picked better, better books for them. I'm going to say that. See, that's the thing. Like, I don't want to say these other two books are bad. I don't think that they're bad books at all. I understand why people love them. It's just for my own personal reading enjoyment and tastes and things that I like in a book and don't, those weren't it for me. So it's okay. Um, all right. So those are <laughs> my feelings on my five-star predictions for this round. Please make sure you go check out Lindsay and Gloria and see how they did. Again, I hope they did a lot better than I did. But yeah, I'm excited to see what they think of theirs too. And I will see you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.